Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, December 18th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. In our previous readings from the book of Nehemiah, we've seen how Nehemiah worked very hard to make sure that the governmental affairs of the returnees from the exile uh, were taken care of, and also that their physical protection was taken care of. But Nehemiah also was interested in the spiritual affairs of the people of Judah who had returned from the exile in Babylon. And so in our reading for today, uh, the priest Ezra reads the law publicly before the assembly of the people and reminds them of everything that the Lord expects them to do. And we see them uh, returning to following the uh, ways that the Lord wanted them to go on uh, as they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles together. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people gathered together at the square in front of the water gate. They asked the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had given Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding. While he was facing the square in front of the water gate, he read out of it from daybreak until noon before the men, the women, and those who could understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a high wooden platform made for this purpose. Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maasiah stood beside him on his right. To his left were Padiah, Mishael, Melchijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshullam. Ezra opened the book in the full view of all the people, since he was elevated above everyone. As he opened it, all the people stood up. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and with their hands uplifted, all the people said, Amen. Amen. Then they knelt low and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Maasiah, Kalita, Azariah, Jazabad, Hanan, and Paliah, who were Levites, explained the law to the people as they stood in their places. They read out of the book of the law of God translating and giving the meaning so that the people could understand what was read. Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all of them, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go and eat what is rich, drink what is sweet, and send portions to those who have nothing prepared since today is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, since today is holy. Don't grieve. Then all the people began to eat and drink, send portions, and have a great celebration, because they had understood the words that were explained to them. On the second day, the family heads of all the people along with the priests and Levites, assembled before the scribe Ezra to study the words of the law. They found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should dwell in shelters during the festival of the seventh month. So they proclaimed, a, uh, proclaimed and spread this news throughout their towns and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hill country and bring back branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make shelters, just as it is written. The people went out, brought back branches, and made shelters for themselves on each of their rooftops and courtyards, the court of the house of God, the square by the water gate, and the square by the Ephraim gate. The whole community that had returned from exile made shelters and lived in them. The Israelites had not celebrated like this from the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that day, and there was tremendous joy. Ezra read out of the book of the law of God every day, from, that, from the first day to the last. 
the Israelites celebrated the festival for seven days. And on the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly according to the ordinance. In our reading for uh, our New Testament reading yesterday, we saw Paul on his second missionary journey. Today, he's going to continue that missionary journey as he spends time in the, in the city of Corinth and founds the congregation there. We'll see him complete his second missionary journey and then almost imperceptibly start his third missionary journey, uh, which will be his final missionary journey before he is arrested and then taken to Rome. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth, where he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul came to them, and since they were of the same occupation, tent makers by trade, he stayed with them and worked. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself to preaching the word and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. When they resisted and blasphemed, he shook out his clothes and told them, Your blood is on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord, along with his whole household. Many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. The Lord said to Paul in a night vision, Don't be afraid, but keep on speaking and don't be silent, for I am with you and no one will lay a hand on you to hurt you, because I have many people in this city. He stayed there a year and a half, teaching the word of God among them. While Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack against Paul and brought him to the tribunal. This man, they said, is persuading people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. As Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, if it were a matter of wrongdoing or of a serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to put up with you Jews. But if these are questions about words, names, and your own law, see to it yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of such things. So he drove them from the tribunal. And they all seized Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But none of these things mattered to Gallio. After staying for some time, Paul said farewell to the brothers and sisters and sailed away to Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He shaved his head at Sancria because of a vow he had taken. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and debated with the Jews. When they asked him to stay for a longer time, he declined, but he said farewell and added, I'll come back to you again if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. On landing at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church. Then he went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he set out, traveling through one place after another in the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native Alexandrian, an eloquent man who was competent in the use of the scriptures, arrived in Ephesus. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately about Jesus, although he knew only John's baptism. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. After Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. When he wanted to cross over to Achaia, the brothers and sisters wrote to the disciples to welcome him. After he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating through the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor 
and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.